born in Jamestown. Jamestown? General Hospital. December 7, 1941, a date which will live in infamy. I'll never forget it. Where were you? I was in high school. Mm -hmm. Yep. What was the reaction? Oh, those dirty slant eyes, SOBs. <laughs> I got drafted. Basic training down at Fort Riley, Kansas. Okay. And then I went, got transferred into the armored unit in uh, Camp Campbell, Kentucky. I was in the States for a year and I was overseas for a year. It took us 14 days and 14 nights and I was sick for 14 days and 14 nights. <laughs> oh, really? Seasick. Yeah. Did you zigzag your way over there? Yeah, well, I was in the convoy. We was a head, we was a head ship in it, and they did zig and zag all the way over, and uh, they uh, they had all kind of stuff lashed on the decks, including you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, me and the two guys that dragged me, <laughs> and then uh, we hit the Mediterranean Sea, and uh, had, had a storm, and everything in the deck got wiped out. So they lost it all. And I'm reading something here that you landed in Marseille in October of 1944. Yep. And then it said within two weeks, some of your elements were in combat already in the Franco-Italian frontier. Does that sound about right? Yeah. I ended up the 7th, 5th, and the 3rd Army. Mm -hmm. Ended up with Patton. Did you yeah. ever see Patton? No, if I had, I'd have shot him. <laughs> he, killed, well, he killed a lot of men. It's funny nobody shot him. Yeah. But he got his reward from when he got rolled over in a jeep, or that killed him. Did, was there a sense in the troops that he was just an egomaniac? Uh, that's about it, yeah. We went up through southern France. Right. And we was up on a fr French-German border a, a lot. And you actually find yourself at a place called Near Hatton, the village of Hatton. That's where the bulge was, yes. Yeah. That's where I got wounded. Tell me about that story. Well, just for example, uh, when we went into Hatton, we had uh, 250 men in our company. And we come out of there, we had 50. They weren't all dead, but you know, 50 uh, dead and wounded. I mean, 50 alive, but the rest of them were dead and wounded, 150 of them. They, they say here that the Hatton Rittershofen um, campaign was one of the hardest and most costly battles that had ever raged on the Western Front. That's true. Yeah, and in fact, the, the Germans broke through and they had a lot of our equipment. Hmm. So they were shooting us with our equipment. And the Air Force was bombing and strafing us because we were going the wrong way. Tell me about what you did there to earn the Bronze Star. Well, what I actually did, I had a machine gun and I was holding off and the Germans still, they could uh, retreat, they strategic withdrawal it was, okay? And uh, then uh, I had been wounded, so I got it for that reason, for still fighting and being wounded. No, I, oh, I had a 30 caliber, I carried it in my arms. In so fact, in fact uh, eventually uh, I put it up on my shoulder and we, then we kept running, going backwards. And by the time we got back where we, we uh, got in with another straight infantry group, I couldn't get the machine gun off my shoulder. It was froze right up there. Right. Someone had to take it off for me. Wait, where were you wounded? I had a mouth. A mouth. A face full of shrapnel and powder burns in both eyes. So it was all yeah. facial. Right. <clears throat> so you're in half, you're, you're hit, yeah, I'm, and you're, hit, you're shooting. Right. Um, what are you thinking about? Thinking about going home. <laughs> <laughs> what else? <laughs> you lost uh, quite a few people during that, that particular. Oh, yeah, yeah. That was, that was a tough one, yeah. Because the Germans, they, they didn't care. They just kept coming. They, acted as though they were doped up or something. They'd shoot one and they'd go down and they'd step right over them and keep coming. 
Did, did you feel like everybody was taken by surprise that the Germans actually attacked? Not, only, not only by surprise. They told us three times the war was over, and then they bombed and strafed us. Eventually, we said it's okay. It was in the winter time. It was cold, right, right around freezing. We were going house to house after people. We walked in this one house, and apparently they just sat down to eat. And it was a hot meal on the table there, so we sat down and ate it. <laughs> it was good. I don't know what it was, but it was good. <laughs> yeah, but at least we had a hot meal off it for the, for the day. A after rest and rehabilitation and defensive missions in February and March, the division returned to the offensive on March 15th. It drove across the Motor River, cracked through the Siegfried Line, and by the end of the month was on the Rhine River. Yep. And you liberated Stalag 13. Yep. And Oflag 13. Do you remember that? Yes, I do. Talk In about fact, one, one of the prisoners there come out and he says, where are you? Where are you goddamn Yanks been? He says, I've been waiting here for seven years for you. He was happy to see us. What was Stalag 13 and Oflag 13? What were they, prisoner war camps? Yes, yes. The 14th Division became known as the Liberators. Yeah, right. Did you liberate a concentration camp? Yeah, I did. We did, I mean. Yeah. What was, what was your feeling of seeing what were the, what were the, I guess I should ask, what was the condition of the prisoners when you... Very skinny. Yeah. Uh, you see the ribs. Yeah. They were in bad shape. Do you remember when there was VE Day? Oh, definitely. What happened then? <laughs> we got drunk. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we, uh, we were outside, just outside of Berlin, and we sat there and waited. We could have gone into Berlin. We sat and waited for the for the <clears throat> Russians to come in and take take Berlin. Hmm. There was a little politics there, I guess. How long did you stay in the army after that? Did, or... <laughs> I'll tell you all about that. Yeah, <laughs> glad you asked. <laughs> At the time, uh, we got uh, we were in Camp Philip Morris because the war got over in Europe. They didn't know what to do with us. And then the war in Japan got over, they didn't know what to do with us any. So they sent us over to England for a week, and then they shipped us back home. And we got home with a 14-day uh, recuperation furlough, and I wasn't home long before they sent me a, uh, another seven days re for recuperation. And so uh, then after that, I went back, I was supposed to go to Texas. But uh, they were out, you could get out on your point system. You got a point for uh, the Purple Heart and the Bronze Star and the Combat Infantry Badge and the Good Conduct even. So you, I had enough points to get out, so I got out. And they said, you get your teeth fixed first. I said, no, I'll get them home, fixed at home, which I did. You were discharged on Veterans Day in 1945. Yeah, I didn't realize that until I read in the paper. <laughs> Well, how ironic, because this guy over here, Gary Chilcott, the director of Chautauqua County Veterans Service Agency, explained that you were awarded the Purple Heart, right. the Bronze Star Medal, five Expeditionary Medals, and, this is right here. and that you were a Staff Sergeant on com uh, with Company C yep. of the Army's 19th Armored Infantry Battalion. Yes and recognized for your heroic achievements near Hatton, France in January 1945. Yep. And he went on to say that during an 11-day stand against the German army, the 14th Division battled through freezing temperatures, rough terrain, and heavy gunfire in the villages of Hatton and Rittenschofen, and that you voluntarily remained behind to cover your platoon during an eventual withdrawal from Hatton. And you said the Germans were really on us. Yep. We were surrounded and that you got hit. Right. Wounded and still manning your machine gun, you continued to fire until each of your comrades had been evacuated. And you were awarded the Purple Heart and the Bronze Star for that. 
Congratulations. Thank you. That's incredible. In fact, for the camera, why don't you show us your, uh, your medals here and explain them. Well, these are the ones I was telling you about. This, this is the good conduct. These are other ribbons for uh, the war and when it was over and all that. And, uh, but that's the Purple Heart. Wow. Can you get that? And that's the Bronze Star. That's terrific. Well, we salute you for all of that. That's, that's remarkable that our government recognizes you for your achievements. I was just lucky, that's all. Yeah. What's the legacy of this whole experience? Well, I'm, I'm glad I went through it, but I wouldn't want to do it again. You see, some of your comrades and colleagues died in the battles. Right, yeah. Um, at the time when that was happening, did you even have time to really emote or have emotions? You, you, try, you try not to get too close to anybody, because mm -hmm. you know what's going to happen. Could happen to them or could happen to you. Well, yeah, I got five days hard labor before we went overseas, and I got five more before we came back. All right. We, that was over in England. Okay. So it, 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 I had to give, we had a, a hard labor, so I had to uh, be the one that would give it. So I gave my ball exercises and finger exercises in the, all the time. What? And that's all we did. Instead of, in the other time, uh, we dug a slit trench. So that was your penalty? Yeah, then, but we, it took us a week to, to uh, get the thing laid out to, to be able to dig it. And by that time, five days, you're done. So you're all set. You're dodging the real question, though. But what did you do to get five days hard labor? We don't know. Right. Or either that, or you're very, very selective memory. I like it. <laughs> uh, what's the question we should be asking you? Am I glad I'm alive? You betcha. We're just thrilled you came and joined us today. Well, glad to be here. This is terrific.